Hey everyone, it's me again. I'm still trying to think of nice relaxing games to, uh, to feature on the channel. Um, thinking of all you folks who, uh, you know, I, I know quite a lot of you are in quarantine or even if you're not, uh, you know, it's kind of a stressful time in, in, in human history and some of you probably just would, would like something kind of uh, calm and relaxing for a while instead of something really high action. So if, if anybody has any suggestions about, you know, really nice, relaxing sort of atmospheric games that uh, don't necessarily have to be DOS games, but I mean, I, ideally, I guess they'd be at least, you know, not, not new games, but I mean, like games, you know, that are, are a little retro and kind of in keeping with the channel's theme. Uh, I'm certainly open to suggestions, but uh, for this video, I thought, you know, what's more relaxing than soaring gracefully through the air like a bird or a cruise missile or something like that? So I thought I'd just try to uh, feature some flying games, some flying sims, uh, which were always really a passion of mine back in the day. Some people really love flight simulators, and I'm one of them. Some people really hate them and think that they're boring. And if you think that flight, sim flight simulators are boring, then this video might not be for you. But uh, let's go ahead and start with the most obvious one, uh, which is Flight Simulator 5, which is the, uh, I believe, the last version of Microsoft Flight Simulator that was released for DOS. One of the problems with uh, civilian flight simulators, like, you know, not military flight simulators, is that Microsoft Flight Simulator has pretty much dominated the field since forever. Uh, I guess it started off from by, uh, being developed by Sublogic, like originally it was a product developed by the company called Sublogic, but then it got bought up by Microsoft. And, you know, to be fair, it's, it's a great simulator and it's one of Microsoft's best products that they've ever made for sure. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a little unfortunate that... Uh, one of the best civilian flight simulators is produced by the uh, the Evil Empire. I hear they're making a new one. Allegedly, they they are working on a new release of Microsoft Flight Simulator after I think more than ten years. But anyway, enough talk. Let's go ahead and um, uh, I guess I could just run FS5 and be on my way. But let's see what the setup program is like. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh, hey, I didn't even know. I don't think I was ever even aware that you could do this. I just randomly thought, hey, let's run the setup, but let's do, yeah, let's do SVGA graphics. Awesome. Um, VESA, yeah, I'm doing this in DOSBox, so VESA should work, right? Let's give that a try. Function keys on top, yes. Microsoft compatible mouse. I like the options are a Microsoft compatible mouse or no mouse. Well, to be fair, Microsoft also controlled basically the DOS mouse standard for, okay, anyway, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and, all right, this looks promising, yeah. Okay, you can use either a mouse or a keyboard. I might just use both, if that's okay with you folks. Um, Okay, all right, Sound Blaster should, uh, let's see what options, to, wow, there are a lot of sound options here. Wow, they have Sound Blaster Pro, Pro Audio Spectrum, Win Microsoft Windows Sound System, remember, <laughs> I like how they abbreviate it as SS. Yeah, the Microsoft Windows Sound System, remember that? That was uh, like something with a microphone that let you talk into Windows. Who ever heard of such a crazy thing? Three varieties of ad lib. Why is there ad lib? Okay, anyway, let's just go ahead and leave it at Sound Blaster. Let's go ahead and leave that for now. Um, don't want to spend too much time dwelling on that. Uh, are these correct? Why well, you can have digitized or synthesized engine sounds. Man, this is awesome. All these options. It's just so cool. Um, I'll skip that for now. I'll just try to leave these at the defaults. Normal flight, sure, as opposed to abnormal flight. Normal time and date, now let's leave it at normal flight. Because I'm doing this at, I'm making this video at night, so I don't want to be flying at night in this video. No, it's not log the flight time. Joysticks off. I do not have a joystick hooked up. All right, congratulations. You've completed the setup. All right, let's go ahead and run Flight Simulator. Oh boy, listen to that sound. Oh yeah. Okay, so if I remember right, I believe F1 through F4 four are the throttle keys. Let's just see. Yeah, see, F3 increases the throttle. So that this black thing here is the throttle lever. So if I press F3, it goes up. There we go. Now I'm at full throttle. Uh, 
Those parking brakes are holding fairly well. I do need to press period to release the parking brakes. If this were a real, you know, if, you, if we were really flying, I would check the mag mags and things like that, but let's just go ahead and just press period and take off. There we go, that released the parking brakes. Oh, I guess I should dial in some flaps. Uh, is that? Yes, F7 did something with the flaps. And uh, I am... Oh, I don't know what controls the rudder. That's okay. I should have I should have pushed the left rudder because my plane was veering to the right, but that's okay. Uh, do I press? Yes, yes I do. This plane has retractable landing gear, so pressing G retracts the landing gear. And look, we're flying. I'll press F5, I think. Yes, F5 retracts the flaps, and that's it. We're flying! We're flying! Yay! And, you know, the graphics are not anything to write home about in this day and age, but, you know, this game came out in the first half of the 1990s. I shouldn't say game. It's a, it's a simulator. It's a serious flight simulator. It's not just a game. Um... You know, in the early 1990s, something like this was pretty impressive. This was really, uh, this was really nice, and it is really nice. I mean, of course, it 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 doesn't quite compare to more recent versions of Flight Simulator because more recent versions have uh, obviously, you know, better graphics, more realistic flight modeling. Also, what's up with the frame rate? Looks like the scenery is updating at like two frames per second or something like that. I don't remember, that's just how I'm perceiving it. But anyway, but I mean, yeah, you know, today it might not seem very impressive, but this, uh, back in the day, this was, uh, this was a big deal. One thing that did always annoy me about Microsoft Flight Simulator is the way uh, it doesn't do momentary key presses. If you press the right arrow and then release it, it doesn't release the right aileron when you release the key. It actually sort of acts as a cumulative thing. If you keep pressing the right arrow, it moves the ailerons more to the right. And then to center it, you have to either press left or press the center 5 key on the Nimrut keypad. I guess the reason for that is because, you know, in a simulation like this, you're not really doing fast maneuvering, like, you know momentary maneuvering like you might do in a military flight simulator. You're really doing like kind of two minute turns as you see in the lower left there. It's actually a nice, that's actually a pretty good turn. I'd, I'd, I wasn't even looking at the turn indicator in the lower left. I just realized I actually dialed in a fairly, fairly nice standard turn without, uh, without really thinking about it. But yeah, we're flying. We're flying over uh, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago Migs Field, that was the, for for the longest time, that was the default airbase that you'd take off from when you were flying in Flight Simulator. And yeah, it's, it's great, you know, it's, uh, I mean, like I said, today it might seem less impressive, but it's nice. And that plain sound, man, if you... If you played Microsoft Flight Simulator 4, you know the plane sound was just a PC speaker drone. It was just a constant square wave. Compare that to this. It actually sounds like a like a plane engine. Awesome. Just awesome. Just really, really awesome. And yeah, of course, today the scenery would be better. There'd be there would be more scenery, it would be better modeled, it wouldn't look so flat and so generic, but uh, let's not worry about that. Let's just enjoy flying over the peaceful green earth below, well, green and gray asphalt earth below, and the beautiful sky above us with its clouds and pollution. Yeah. Once you get used to flying, it can be quite relaxing. When you're learning to fly, it's pretty stressful. But when you when you get used to just being up here, then you know it's uh, it's nice. I 
wondering how long I should uh, go on for because I don't think we're going to see anything. I don't think we're going to see anything particularly uh, different from this if we keep flying for another 10 minutes. Let me just see. What options do we have here? Um, situations. What did this have for situations? Okay, okay, I, that's the MiGs takeoff, which we just did. Munich, okay, which is actually, yeah, Oh, fly over Munich, Germany, which is actually München. Get it right. Uh, New York City tour. Flying east northeast toward New York City. Nimitz. Oh, that's the aircraft carrier uh, off the coast of San Francisco. And then Oakland, which of course is close to San Francisco. More Oakland. Paris. Paris. Fly over Paris, le France. Of drafts on a soaring ridge near San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a um, fairly American-centric focus here, which is, I guess, understandable since you know it's a an American game and and such. But let's see, what what aircraft did we have here? I think didn't this game have a, like four aircraft in it, or am I thinking of a different game? I feel uh, here we go, aircraft. Yeah. Yeah, it, it has four aircraft. So the one that we're flying right now is just the generic Cessna, Cessna Skyline RG-182. RG stands for retractable gear. If it was not RG, you could not retract the landing gear. Uh, then there's the Learjet, which is actually quite a nice uh, jet aircraft, like a, yeah, like a chartered jet. The Schweizer Sailplane, which is a glider. So it's, you know, it has no engine in it. And they've got the stop with Camel, which is... Uh, Something interesting to fly, but let, let me just quickly see. Can I just, on the fly, switch into the Learjet? Yes, I can. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's see, where's my, uh... Oh, that's my throttles there. The two, uh... These two things down here are my two throttles, because the plane's got two engines. Or well, this plane has two engines. Um... I don't know, this, this might be a bit less relaxing because this plane obviously is considerably faster than the one I was in before. You also see a bit less of the ground, like the, the instrument panel covers up most of the ground. And uh, that sound might be a bit grating. Okay, let's real quick try the... Um, try the, the SOP with Camel and just see what that's like. I think what's going to happen is... well, let's see... Yeah, it, uh, I think it uh, put me into this plane with the same speed that I was at before. So I started off flying this plane with the speed of a jet plane, which is not, not, uh, not great. But uh, it seems to have survived. Yeah, and this is actually a decent plane for uh, just kind of bumming around, just low low speed flying around sightseeing this is probably the best plane for that because you know it's a world war one plane so it's not particularly fast it's designed for just just being slow and just kind of flying around well it's it's designed for combat i mean this is a fighter plane this was a world war one fighter but aerodynamically it's just a, a small slow plane that putters around and actually i'm, I'm going way too fast aren't i let me see how do i Let's reduce the throttle here some. And that is not helping. I'm still, I think I'm still picking up speed, probably because I'm pointing down. Yeah, I'm still, still increasing the speed there somewhat. Okay, let's, let's finish this off by going into the, the uh, Schweizer. That is this one. And then, there we go. Ah, peace and quiet, silence. And yeah, of course, this plane is a glider, so you can't just ramp up the engine and fly away because there is no engine. You just have to glide slowly down towards the earth. And if you um, if you want to stay in the air, you might find an updraft of of warm rising air, which is you know called a thermal, and that will kind of lift up your plane, kind of buoy it up and, and keep it airborne longer. But 
eventually you'll you'll have to come down and land. I've actually never been in a glider. I used to take uh, I used to take flying lessons, and I have actually flown uh, a few different Cessna light planes, like you know, single engine, small general aviation planes. But I have never even been inside a glider, let alone flown one. Seems like it's pretty relaxing because you know you don't get the engine noise. You're just here soaring over the over the peaceful ground below and the skies above and you're in between them stuck in the middle with you I wonder what happens if I click on this test button oh I don't think it's operable no I'm not sure I'm not sure which of these controls are operable apparently those are not or maybe clicking on them is the wrong thing to do but anyway Anyway, yeah, Microsoft Flight Simulator 5, very, very good sim, really, uh, really uh, definitely state of the art at the time. And again, you know, one of, easily one of Microsoft's best products next to MS-DOS and Windows 3.1 and, uh, I don't know, Quick Basic, Quick Basic was all right. I'm trying to think if they did they make any other good software products they probably did I just can't think of any right now but yeah give give Microsoft some credit I mean they, they did make a few nice things back in the day I mean they don't now but you know they they did once there there once was a time when some good things came up came from Microsoft anyway let's go ahead and exit out of this this will end your flight simulator session okay all right, so, I mean, that was obviously the cream of the crop. That was, you know, I saved the best for first. Everything else after that is going to be less uh, less impressive, but uh, I just wanted to do a little kind of survey of some, uh, some other flight simulators that I remember from the day. So um, this is solo flight. I think I need to turn down the cycles in DOS box. Let me do that before I run it. There we go. And yeah, it's from Microprose, the people who made, uh, who later made a whole bunch of other flight simulators, which are probably better remembered than this one. I like how it asks if I have a, an RGB monitor or a television or NTSC color monitor. Man, remember the times when people actually hooked up, to, hooked up their televisions to their home computers? Well, and now they do that again today. There was sort of a period in the 1990s where computers usually used VGA and were not compatible with televisions. But in the very early days of computing, and now again in the 21st century era, computers were often, were and are often connected to televisions. Anyway, I'll say I have an RGB monitor, joystick and keyboard. I do not have a joystick, so I'll say keyboard. Oh boy. I think, I think DOSBox is still running too fast, but let's see how we can, can we, okay, no. <laughs> It pauses at the menu for like one or two seconds and then it starts the demo. Okay, one for flying practice. Oh, even after you press something there, you still, wow, okay, hold on. Flying practice, Kansas, clear weather. All right, there we go. You're doing fine, that's great news. So, wait, is this actually, oh yeah, okay. It's sort of semi, wait, I need to retract my landing gear, L. There we go, it's retracted. Ooh, I'm high, no I'm not, I'm completely sober. Uh, turn left to 270. Yeah, I mean, this game, you can clearly see it's, um, it is not, uh, oh, I need to turn to 180 now. I'm right on course. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm high, but I'm on course. I don't know if that's a good thing, but okay. Okay, I need to stop gaining altitude. So yeah, this game from, I guess, the early 80s is obviously considerably less advanced than, um, than Microsoft Flight, Flight Simulator. It still has, you know, the basic stuff in it. I mean, it has navigation, like it has real navigation in it. It has actual real world maps from several different locations. I think they're all American locations. Uh, th this is Kansas. Uh, I saw Washington there. And what was, what was the other one? 
Why did the sound suddenly cut out? Oh, I think I ran out of fuel. Uh, that's not good. I was not supposed to run out of fuel. That was not a uh, that was not a planned outcome. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think DOS box is still running way too fast because I, I think planes are. Oh dear, yeah, planes are not supposed to run out of fuel that fast. Let's see what else do we have. Colorado, come on, Colorado, Michigan, Massachusetts, and Texas. So all American locations. But okay, let's see what does Texas look like. Let's no, come on, come on. Let's say Texas. Okay, so this is Texas. Well, I can't say Texas looks much different from Kansas, which might not be surprising, but... Uh, oh, yeah. If you look at the fuel indicator in the lower right, that blue bar going down, wow, that is going down fast. That that indicate, that just gives you an idea of how how fast the sim is running. It doesn't look like it's that fast. If you, you, know, if you do some flying around like this, it doesn't seem like it's going that fast, but this sim is actually operating way, 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 way above where it's supposed to be operating. Yeah, I mean, this would be a good game to get into if you like, uh, if you like, you know, games that are more about navigation. I mean, the whole point of this game is you're supposed to be flying a mail plane, like, you know, like a postal postal carrier plane delivering packages and mail to people in remote areas but um, um, yeah the graphics are not not too enticing kind of reminds me a bit of Jet Set I, I so I don't know how many of you folks have seen that flight simulator called Jet Set, which is actually a, uh, it's completely text-based. It is a text mode flight simulator. And that doesn't sound like much, but it's actually impressive how much they do with text mode. It actually is is a little bit more than you'd expect. And it's mostly about instrument flying, so you don't need great outside graphics anyway. You just need to render the, you know, the flight instruments on the screen. Almost looks like the game is, wait, what's, wait why did the ground suddenly change color like that? Oh, maybe it's getting to be nighttime, and that's how, what nighttime looks like in this game. It almost looks like the game is frozen because there's very little going on, just those numbers in the lower left. And, I mean, you can make the plane move around. You can make the plane turn and do all kinds of crazy stuff. But, yeah. Okay, I'll go ahead and exit out of that. That's, uh... Wait, how, how do I exit out of this now? Um... Um, how do I quit this game? Um, is there a way to quit this game? Uh, hold on. Let me, uh, look up the documentation. I do have a, uh, I do actually have the manual for this game. Uh, let me see. Does it say how to quit? Does it say anywhere how to quit? There's a lot of information on flying, which I guess makes sense. But uh, it would be nice if there were information on how to do game things like... I mean, I guess I could just close DOSBox and restart it, but I'd like to actually see if there's an actual control to uh, to quit the game, because... Um, I don't see one. So, rather than waste too much time trying to look for one... Is there really... It's just hard for me to imagine that... It's it's a little hard for me to imagine that people uh, could overlook something so simple, but you know, I mean, back in the day, actually, I think I think this game was meant to be a booter. I think that's probably the deal here. Okay, I'll just go ahead and close it. This game, as far as I know, is meant to be a uh, a booter game, which means you know it doesn't. Uh, 
Uh, you don't run it from DOS. It boots with the uh, with the computer. And if you if you um, If you do that, there's no operating system to quit to because you didn't start the game from an operating system. You started it directly from boot. So you'd eject the disk and then restart your computer, and that's, I guess, how you'd quit out of it. But okay, anyway. Okay, we're back here in DOSBox. So let's see, what was the third game? Oh, yeah, the third game that I wanted to take a look at was uh, potentially less, uh, less soothing and relaxing. But it's kind of an, uh, a, a very underrated um, civilian flight simulator, and I thought it might be worth taking a look. It is called Flight Assignment ATP, which stands for Airline Transport Pilot. And as you can guess, it is exclusively about being a, uh, a transport pilot. So let's see, press Escape to exit Demo Flight assi Assignment. There we go. Oh, did it actually detect... I guess it detected that it's nighttime. Is there a clock anywhere here? Oh yeah, they're in the uh, in the on the left side, in the middle of the left of the very far left side. It actually shows the actual time. Um, yeah, twenty two fifty eight, ten fifty eight p.m. So, all right, let's see. Um, I believe so. I need to ramp up my throttle here. Actually, can I change the time because? I know it really is nighttime, but I'd like to have it not be nighttime. Is there a way to. Here we go. How do I. Pressing the function keys. So F1, F2. Environment. Here we go. Uh, time. So press 4 for time. Advance hours. Let's make it. There we go. Let's make it noon. There we go. Press escape. There we go. That's better. Now it's noon instead of uh, instead of late at night. Okay, and I th if I remember right, I think throttle up is page up. Yes, it is. That thing on the, in the upper right of the instrument panel is the throttle. So I've just increased throttle to full throttle. And hopefully the plane will be lifting off soon. Started off with flaps dialed in a bit, so that should be... I guess I can increase the flaps just a little bit. All right, so far so good. I think this game is also from Sublogic, so it's kind of like when, when Microsoft bought the rights to Flight Simulator, then Sublogic said, well, let's go back to the drawing board and make a game that's all about just flying airliners and being an airline transport pilot, which is a nice idea uh, in some ways, but it obviously is a bit of a niche thing because... Um, you know, flying airliners is okay, but Flight Simulator could do so much more than that. Well, Flight Simulator 5 didn't have airliners. The airliners didn't come into Flight Simulator until later versions. But, um... That beeping is a, uh, a navigation marker beacon. Sorry. I know it's kind of annoying. But anyway, here we go. We're up in the air. I don't know if you can turn off that red thing in the middle of the heads-up display. You probably can, but I don't know how. So we'll just have to try to live with it. Oh yeah, I should pull my gear up. I think gear up is the... Yes, it is. It is the... Um... Or? Or is it the other one? I thought it was the uh, the left square bracket. Maybe it's... Oh, sorry, it's the... It's the right square bracket. Okay, then left square bracket is probably geared down. Which is a difficult key to type if you're using a German keyboard, which is why I pulled up my English, uh, American English keyboard for this video. Um, oh, I should lift up my flaps. There we go, done with that. This game also does the uh, the same thing that uh, Microsoft Flight Center does. The key inputs are not momentary. If you press right, like if I uh, if I press left, let me let me do this. Let me press left a few times. See what that does. It keeps the ailerons to the left, and I have to kind of counter that by moving them to the to the right to level off the plane. 
I find that annoying, but I guess people just thought that that was what was sensible to do for um, for civilian flight simula simulators like this. It's pretty annoying because obviously a real plane doesn't behave like that. If you take your hands off the controls, they auto-center. But not in this game. Again, it's it's not a game. It's a simulator. It's a serious flight simulation of flying a airliner. Oh yeah, and I think that number in the upper left of the control panel is our Mach number. See, it's at 0.59, which I believe means, yeah, now it's 0.6. I believe that means we are flying at 60% of the speed of sound. We're, yeah, we're at Mach 0.6, so we are at flying at, now we're flying at about two-thirds the speed of sound, which is, you know, pretty fast. Yeah, now we're at 70% and still going faster. Is this also Chicago? I think this might also be Migsfield in uh, Chicago that we took off from. Or at least, well, maybe it was a different airport, but that's Chicago be beneath us anyway, I'm pretty sure. We're at Mach 0.8, which I think is... Oh, Mach Buffett. Oh, Mach Buffet. Okay, we need to slow down. Yeah, so most airliners cruise at about Mach 0.8. They don't want to get too close to the speed of sound because... Uh, as you approach the speed of sound, uh, if the plane is not built for it, it that sets up a horrible vibration uh, in the airframe, and it's actually quite uh, quite disconcerting, or so I understand. If I've never experienced it personally, and I hope I never do, because you do not want to be approaching the speed of sound in a plane that's not built for that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. But yeah, again, you know, once you get airborne, and once the beeping sounds stop and you get into a nice kind of casual cruising flight, you can just cruise around, and instead of the greens and grays of Microsoft Flight Simulator, this game has greens and browns. There's a huge brown thing there, which might be a farmer's field, and another brown thing next to it, which might be another farmer's field, and that... Clouds are getting in the way now. Hold on, let's, let's dip down below that cloud. There we go. What is... Oh, I'm going too fast. Hold on. Uh, no, not that. Uh, let's turn off the throttle. And I'm still going too fast. How do I turn on the spoiler? I don't know. The plane is... There we go. I was going to say that sort of white formation at the edge of that brown thing is probably an airport, and indeed it is. That is an airfield with two intersecting runways. So yeah, flight assignment ATP, Airline Transport Pilot. Uh, if I was playing this properly, I would definitely be doing things a lot differently from how I'm doing them now, but you know, I'm not actually... I'm not actually flying my assignment. I'm not actually flying to be a, a pilot here. I'm actually just uh, just flying for pleasure. I'm flying this big uh, airliner for pleasure, and so, uh, yeah, just flying around looking at the scenery. And it's kind of fun. It's, it's kind of enjoyable. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Let's just relax. Let's just chill as we slowly turn around in a gentle turn and look at the beautiful sights around us. Beauty is all around us, folks. The world is a beautiful place, as long as you're not around other people. And it, I don't just mean that in the coronavirus social dist distancing sense. I mean that in general. Um, but yeah, this is nice. That red thing is a bit annoying. There's probably a way to turn it off, but I don't know what it is, and I'm not I'm not too sussed about it. It doesn't bother me that much. I hope that it doesn't bother you folks too much either. Okay. I think that's about enough of that. Let's see, how do I get out of this now? Okay, if I press F1, I can then press, I guess, 7 to quit. Indeed, it does. It does quit. That does work just fine. Very nice. 
Okay, uh, well, the last game that I wanted to take a look at was uh, Sublogic's UFO Simulator. This is kind of an obscure game. Um, it's... Uh, I don't know it very well. Go through startup menus. Um, okay. Um, Okay, let's do the uh, VGA 16, so F. Um, let's do regular flight mode, so B. I've been PC, function keys on top, so B. Do I want to use the mouse? Sure, why not? Yes. Oh. I just realized I think it's back to the German keyboard because I had to restart DOSBox, so it's probably that's probably why I had to press Z or Z uh, for Y there. Okay, anyway, this is UFO. Um, it's it's kind of a weird simulator because it it is meant to simulate you know a UFO like this you know this shape here, but in principle it's it works kind of like a helicopter. Again, you use F1 through F4 to change your throttle, which is actually just that anti-grav thing there. See in the in the um, bottom left, there's anti-gravity. It's really just, uh, yeah, there we go. When anti-gravity goes high enough, then you lift up straight up into the air, just like a helicopter. And you can use the, um, you know, you can use the arrow keys just like a cyclic on a on a helicopter, it works pretty much the same way. In the upper right, you have GORADS, which I think is altitude in um, in feet. And in the upper left, you have KELS, which I believe is fuel units. Well, here it's energy units, but it's basically yeah, it's, it works just like fuel in a plane. And really, it works just like flying a helicopter, you know, because the the craft wants to go straight up. So you go up, and then you kind of pitch forward to move forward, just as I'm doing now. And I don't know why there's no sound. I thought that there I thought that there is supposed to be sound, but maybe is it that is it that the game is not playing sound, or is it just that the spacecraft I'm in is silent because it doesn't have an engine? Like we're not actually flying with an engine; we're flying with anti gravity. So theoretically, it could just be that it's silent. But anyway, um, I don't really know very much about this game. I never really got very much into it. It looks intriguing, but really. Unless I'm terribly mistaken, it's pretty much just a reworked helicopter simulator. It is it is from Sublogic. It is based on the flight simulator engine. So it's pretty much just a reworked flight simulator with different controls and a different user interface. You know, again, they've renamed some things. So instead of fuel leaders, you have KELs. Instead of altitude and feet, you have GORADs. Um, and I don't know what most of this other stuff is, to be honest. Um, there is kind of a plot to this game. Apparently the whole point is that you're supposed to be trying to destroy humanity or something. You're supposed to, or at least you're supposed to be, see how, see how at the top it says harvested energy? You're basically supposed to harvest energy from, from humanity. So I think it's kind of like, you know that classical sort of UFO trope where alien ships uh, have a tractor beam on the bottom and they beam up, beam up cows and people and things like that. I think it's kind of like that in this game. You're supposed to find things that you can beam into your ship to harvest energy from the human beings and keep those kells up so you don't so you don't run out of kells. You don't want to you don't want to run out of kells because then your spaceship will crash. Um. So yeah, it's it's a a bit less of a flight simulator and a bit more of a a game like you know i mean there's a score at the top as well so it's, it's kind of like a flight simulator slightly reworked to be sort of like an action game except it doesn't really work like either of them because it's it doesn't work very well as a flight simulator because it's not simulating an actual real world aircraft and it doesn't really work very well as a game for uh what what may be obvious reasons <laughs> I actually, I really like Simcopter. It reminds me of Simcopter. I actually really like Simcopter. I know a lot of people don't like Simcopter and they say it's it's boring and dumb, but I actually really like it. It just doesn't run well because it's it's Windows only. It's only available for Windows. And um, uh, it's terribly buggy. Like it, it crashes constantly 
on more recent versions of Windows. I should try it in Wine or something like that. Try it in an, in an emulator and see how that works out. And yeah, sometimes this spaceship is a little bit difficult to control. Now it's kind of swaying crazily, and I don't know why it's doing that. I'm trying to trying to keep it still. Oh, I see. I pressed 5 on the numeric keypad, and that centered the controls. Sometimes the controls on this go a bit weird. And I don't know why. Like I said, I don't know much about this sim, but... Um, it's also kind of relaxing, you know? Just kind of floating around in a spaceship. Can I change the view? Let me check the views here. I think that... Um, hold on, how do I... Oh, there we go. Um, I thought it was the function keys, but it's not F1, it's just 1. Um, how do I change the view? Wait, ground texture. SML rectangles. Big rectangles. Oh, I see. That's small rectangles. Yeah, let's do small rectangles. That's nice. Doesn't seem to have changed the ground texture very much, but okay. Uh, display options. Dun, 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 dun. Where's... Um... Oh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Tracking camera. Yeah, that'll... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we've got a tracking camera and we can see our spacecraft from externally. Uh, is there a way to zoom? Because I'd, I'd really love to... There we go. Plus. Yeah, plus zooms in on it. And we can see our UFO. That's what we are currently piloting. And uh, it's probably going wildly out of control because I'm in a third-person view and I don't really see where we're going. I noticed that my GORADs are climbing wildly, so I'm gaining altitude at some stupidly high rate. Oh, that's because my anti-gravity is at 100%. Well, 99%. So uh, maybe I should go back to the first-person view, but I don't know how. And oh, well, it doesn't matter. A zoom of 511. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, so that's UFO. Kind of a nice game. Kind of, kind of relaxing, sort of, sometimes but also a little bit weird. Probably could be a lot of fun if you get into it and figure out how it works, but I never bothered to do so. But, you know, like any other non-combat flight simulator, if you, uh, if you like being up in the air and looking down and floating serenely on, uh, on whatever UFOs float on, then it could be pretty cool. So anyway, I think I'll go ahead and leave it at that. This has been uh, flying around in DOSBox to try and relax ourselves. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that uh, that it was kind of enjoy. You know, hope that it was kind of enjoyable for you. And I just realized my gorads are going way down, so I think something must be wrong with the uh, with my flight trajectory. Hold on, before I go, let me. Can I get back into the? Um... Here we go. Now we can see. There we go. Now we can. Now nah, that's that's a better view. Now we can actually see our UFO in relation to the ground. Let's see, what happens if we crash it? Can I just do a, like a, a catastrophic crash and do something really uh, incredibly amazing with it? I think whatever's happening now is a good example of something that shouldn't happen if you're piloting a, uh, a UFO. I don't really know what's going on, but it does not look good. It looks like something that you do not want to happen to your UFO that you're flying in. So let's just let's just go ahead and simulate a nice crash because that's relaxing on a computer screen at least. Gorads are going down. We're just passing 5000. We should be on the ground soon. Well actually it's it's going to be in the water and not on the ground, but I think I think hitting the water at this speed will probably count as a crash. <laughs> and Well, it looks like it landed perfectly, but I think, uh, doesn't the sim reset? Maybe it doesn't. Okay, that's weird. I thought this, I thought this would reset if, if you crash, but it looks like it just, just serendipitously made a perfect landing on the water and is waiting for us to take off again. Can I actually just, yes, I can. I can just lift off and <laughs> just keep flying as if nothing happened. All right. I thought it would crash, but it didn't. Well, that's disappointing, but, um. Uh,
but maybe it shouldn't be. All right, everyone, once again, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. This was Let's Fly Around for a while for no reason whatsoever, just for fun. Let's just have fun. I uh, hope you folks are doing well. Take care of yourselves. Um, stay healthy. Do something that makes you happy, as always. You know, enjoy something a little bit, and uh, I will talk to you folks later. Bye-bye for now.